Okay, this is Mr. Jealous. We are going to talk about the geometry vocabulary today. Again, we are starting the second semester, and everybody starts fresh. So make sure that you really engage and allow yourself to be successful. Geometry is different from algebra, and everybody can do it. Everybody's capable. But you are going to have to learn and work and figure out uh, these new definitions and what these new words mean. Once you do that, you'll be very successful. So let's get started. In order to get full credit for these notes, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to copy down the title. So right now on the top of your page, copy down Geometry Vocabulary Intro. Underneath that, you're going to have to write down the link that allowed you to get to this video. It starts with a bit.ly, so go find the link and write it down underneath the title. And the third thing you're going to need to do to get full credit is to make sure that your notes are clean and neat. All the definitions and pictures are drawn out neatly. If it's not neat, if it looks like you rushed through it, you're not going to get full credit. Take the time right now. It's not going to take you very much longer to be able to be successful. And the little things right now are going to allow you to be more successful later. Again, also remember to use lots of color. Color helps memory dramatically, and it'll help a lot especially with definitions. <clears throat> okay, so let's get started. The first three words are point, vertex, and midpoint. The definition of a point is a location in space represented by a dot. It's identified by a capital letter. So our picture is pretty simple. It's a dot with a capital letter A. You can put whatever letter you want. I just chose A. And that would be written as point A or said as point A. A vertex is similar to a point because it is a point. It's a point where two lines intersect. My son refers to a vertex as a corner because that is the point where two lines or two walls intersect. So we have our picture. Look over here. We have two rays and then a red dot. The red dot is our vertex. We label it as a B because it is a point. And I would call that vertex B. The third word is midpoint. Midpoint is the point that splits a line segment in half. Okay, so let's start drawing this. We have a line segment. Then we have one end point here and another end point there. We have the point that is right in the middle. We have to name all of those points. So I'm going to name them A and C would be my end points. M would be my midpoint because it's right in the middle. One way that you can write this is you can write AM is congruent to MC. Another way, if you're using the picture that you can show that they are the same size, is that we're going to put a couple of bars. The bars in this case are orange. But the bar in between AM and the same bar in between MC shows that AM is the same distance as MC and M is in the middle. So M is your midpoint. Why don't you pause the computer, copy those words down, the definitions, and the pictures. Again, make it neat and clean. Once you're done, unpause the computer, and let's get going. The next three words are line, line segment, and ray. These are all similar and have things in common. You'll notice I try to do that with all the definitions. I put things together that uh, have similarities. So a line is the straight path connecting two points and extending beyond the points in both directions. It's identified by a lowercase cursive letter. So again, a line is right there, and it's identified by a lowercase cursive letter. So since I can't do cursive on the computer, I do an italics L. You will do a cursive letter. Okay? Arrows in both directions show that the line extends beyond the points in both directions. The second term is line segment. A line segment is a part or piece of a line with two given endpoints. The picture here, endpoint A, endpoint B, and the line segment that connects the two points. One way that we show that this is a line segment, or one way that we can write the line segment, is our endpoints, A, B, with a little bar over top of AB. And the way you would say that is line segment AB. Array 
is similar to a line or a line segment in that it's a line that starts at one point and continues in one direction. So we have our ray here. It starts at A and it continues through B and you see the end of the uh, where the arrow is that tells us that it goes on and on forever. That lets us know that it's a ray. The way that we abbreviate or write it is AB and then with an arrow in one direction. So that would be stated as ray AB. The next three words are intersect, bisect, and congruent. Intersect is when two lines or line segments cross at a point. So we have line E, we have line N, and we have vertex P. Vertex P is the point where the two lines intersect. Okay? The next word is bisect. Bisect means to cut an angle or a line segment in half, or to find the middle. And remember we used this picture for our midpoint? Well, that's the same thing that we're going to use for bisect, because bisect is just the verb form. We're going to take a line and we're going to draw a line straight through. That red line segment bisected AC. So it cut AC in half. And it cut AC in half at point M. So the red line segment bisected AC at midpoint M. Again, a lot of words that we're going to be putting together would don't make much sense now, but the more you work with them, the easier they will be. And the next word we're going to talk about is congruent. Congruent means the same shape and size. Talks with lines, angles, and different shapes. So let's look at a couple of pictures of things that are congruent. The first one are two line segments that we have, and they are both 12 units long. The second one we're going to look at are two ovals, and those two ovals are congruent as well. They're the same shape and size. Okay? Let's move on to our next set of three words. Again, when I get to the bottom of each slide, pause the computer and copy down the notes. Make sure they're nice and neat and clean and they use lots of color. The next three words, perpendicular lines, perpendicular bisector, and circumcenter. So perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect at a right angle. The slopes are opposite and reciprocal. So we're actually going back to graphing a little bit here because you are going to have perpendicular lines and lines always have an equation. So if we had a slope that was two-thirds and we wanted it to be perpendicular, and that's the symbol for perpendicular, upside down, capital T. The slopes would have to be opposite and reciprocal. So instead of a positive two-thirds, your slope would be negative three over two. Okay, and perpendicular lines, they intersect at a right angle. That would be a picture of two lines that intersect at a right angle. A perpendicular bisector is a line that bisects another line segment at a right angle through the midpoint. So kind of like we just did on bisect, that last, uh, that last one was a perpendicular bisector. The only difference between a bisector and a perpendicular bisector is that the two lines intersect at 90 degrees. So we have AB, we have our line segment, we have our perpendicular bisector at point M, and we have our right angle. And the way you know that it's the perpendicular bisector is your orange bars that connect. Okay? The next one that we're going to talk about is the circumcenter. And a circumcenter is a point where the perpendicular bisectors of the sides of a triangle intersect. Again, the vocabulary is getting a little bit thick right now, but that's fine. Stick with it and try and understand it. Okay? It is equidistant from all three vertices of the triangle. So if we have a triangle, we have three vertices or three vertexes. Vertices is the plural of vertex. 
okay? And the circumcenter is equidistant or the same distance away from all three corners. So one perpendicular bisector goes there, another perpendicular bisector goes there, and the third perpendicular bisector goes there, and that big black dot is your circumcenter. I'm going to teach you how to find the circumcenter of triangles in a day or so, or coming soon. The last two words that we're going to talk about are best and fair. And I'm going to hold off on their definitions until class tomorrow. Make sure that you know all the definitions that we have done. Make sure you have all of their pictures written down. And make sure you can kind of use them in sentences for class tomorrow. All right? Remind me tomorrow, best and fair are the two words that we have not gone over. Have a great night and review these notes. And if you need to listen to this video two or three times or four times or even ten times, please do it. It'll only benefit you. Thank you. Have a great day.